So everybody is reading the data. So if we type edit, so our object that contains the case control information from the outbreak in Stuttgart is the object called that geo. I call it geo because this object contains the database of cases and controls in a geometrical, geometrical coordinate system. This is important. Yeah. I call it that geo, I mean you could call it as you want, but I call it in this way just to remember myself that the coordinates here are in a geometrical coordinate system. Hmm? Meaning that uh, they are in latitude and longitude. Hmm? This is important. Why? Why is important to consider the, the coordinate system when you are working with distance? Or with uh, to know which, which type of uh, we are the unit we are using. The main problem is that if you use geographical coordinate system in latitude longitude, you don't have distance, you have angles. So if you want to work with distance, and the spatial analysis mostly is done based on distance, you need your coordinates in a projected coordinate system in meters. Hmm? So Let's have a look to our database. If we type edit that geo, you will see that the database contains the coordinates in the in an x, uh, x and y, and that is this is the latitude and the longitude of each uh, case or uh, control. Okay. So what we are going to do uh, is to prepare another object where we will change the coordinate system uh, of our data. So I'm going to generate a second object that is called that pro that will contain the coordinates in a projected uh, coordinate system. Okay? So what I'm doing is to create a second object that pro that is exactly equal to that deal. And in one, I will set up the coordinates in a ge ge uh, geographical coordinate system. And in this one, I will set up the coordinates in a projected coordinate system. In this way, you have two, uh, the two objects, with one two with different coordinate uh, systems. Hmm? So let's specify the coordinate like, system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like generate one yeah. So to specify the coordinate system of a, an object, we are going to need the library Air, Air Jedi. Hmm? So we are going to load this library. Okay, so the next command, the next step is to specify the coordinates of each, the coordinate system of uh, both uh, objects, okay? To specify the coordinates, the coordinates of an object, we can use the command coordinates. Mm -hmm. So what I do here is I type coordinates and in brackets I put the object where I want to set up the coordinates and I specify the variables that contain the coordinates. So here, this command is going to generate coordinates for that, that geo. And the next, next command, the prod for, uh, for a string, is going to uh, determine the coordinate system. Okay? In this case, the projection is latitude longitude. So if you do head that geo, it's not, it's not applicable, that geo is not, if you do that geo, yeah, without uh, the head, eh? because head cannot be, because it's not anymore a data frame. You will see that the object that geo 
now contains the waypoint, the cases, but there is a, a, a first field that contains the coordinates of each point. Okay? So it's a way, this is a way how R store coordinates information, you know? Uh, once more. Um, before you had X and Y, and now you have X and Y information in one... In one single field that is coordinates. Okay. And could we get the same for more? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is is in your practice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so with the first step, we have specified that x and y are coordinates, and in the second step, we have selected the projection. So we are going to do the same for the projected. Um, for the projected uh, object, okay? Now, we want the coordinates uh, in the projected object, hmm? not in latitude-longitude, but we are going to use UTM coordinates, okay? So we have meters. We have one command that is SP transform that in R allows to transform coordinates from one system to another. So, I'm telling here R that I want to specify the coordinates of this projected, of this object as the coordinates in that geo but with a different projection, the UTM projection. So what I'm doing here is, you know that we have two objects, one this one and this one, one, this one that will contain the coordinates in a projected way. So what I'm doing here is I'm, say, I'm, I'm telling the software that I want to specify the coordinates for this object equal to the coordinates of this object but using a different projection, the UTM projection. Okay? So if you type here that pro So you see that the new object, that pro, contains more information, you know? Why? Because we have, key, before, for the that geo, we have transformed these two fields in a coordinate field. Here, in the new syntax, in that pro, what we have done is to add the coordinates of that geo, but in another coordinate system. So now you have the coordinates in a UTM system, and the coordinates here in a latitude-longitude system. Okay. So I think that many, many, many of you, you are trying to edit the that pro and that geo, but you cannot. But this is normal because that geo and that pro are not a data frame anymore. They were at the beginning, but we have had the coordinates to this object. So they have become a complex object. So it cannot be edited. So if you if you type the slot names the slot names that pro for instance you will see that there is different um, there are different slots inside. So now we have a slot that contains our original data and a slot that contains the coordinates. Hmm? So this is because you cannot edit this as a table. It's because it has different slots. So if you want to edit, you, can you need to call to the data. Hmm? You can do edit that pro at data. In this case, you can came back to the original table. 
You need to call to the slot that contains the data. Mm -hmm. Are you sure the key? Yeah, it's there. It's credit. Yeah, yeah. That row add data. So in this case, you can come back to your, your original database. So you understand that we just read one database, and we add to this database the coordinates. So automatically, R transform your original database in a complex object that contains your table plus the coordinates in a specific projection. Hmm? So what we are going to do now is using um, sorry, here there is one thing one thing missed. I think that in the practice this is wrong as well. Sorry. Uh, what we are going to do now is to separate in two different uh, objects the cases and the controls. We can use for this a very useful command in R that is subset. So we are going to have, have a subset of our original uh, uh, database in an object that it will be the cases. And, and we will have a subset in another one that will be the control. So for this, we need to specify the object where we can, where we want to apply the subset and the criteria that we want to use to um, select the, 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 the records. So here, what I'm saying is that I'm going to do a subset of our of my that pro object and using the slot data and the variable case, I'm going to select those ones that are cases. And here I'm going to do a subset using my that pro. I'm going to apply in the in the uh, slot data this criteria that the case is equal to zero. So I, I'm selecting the control. Okay? Okay. Then, uh, before the variable, you have always to put the dollar, and before the slot, always the add. That, exactly. Okay. Okay. So, to select the slot, you use uh, add, and to select the variable, you use the dollar, as we said before. Oh, you added data okay. Yeah, because okay. the, the, the database is stored in the, in the slot data. Mm -hmm. But this is not in the script now. Yeah, it's in the port. Yeah. Yeah, cases are control. Yeah, but this is a Yeah, but I, I, it's a type, type in error, so it's not the add. There's a, sorry, in the, in the notes, in the notes, there is a type in error, eh? I, I forget to write add data. In your notes, I forgot to type this at data. So but it's working with our I'm sorry. Eh? It's working. <laughs> it's working with it. But it's working without. How can that be? It shouldn't. But, uh, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what you what you did. <laughs> okay. So now, if we type if we type cases, we will have just. Uh, the cases. I know it works. <laughs> well, anyway, the correct way is like this. Eh? So now we have the cases in one object and the controls in another object. Okay? So what we are going to do is to plot. Uh, the cases, the cases and the controls. Hmm? First, we are going to plot them all together, okay? Using the that probe. So it's very, uh, uh, sorry, using the, the geographical coordinate system. We are going to use first the geographical coordinate system. Hmm? So if you type plot that geo at coordinate, court, 
it will plot the location of the cases using a, a geographical coordinate system. <coughs> I add in the syntax this part that establish the lab for the x axis and here this establish the lab, the lab for the y axis so latitude longitude and I add a title for the for the graph that is event geographical coordinates so you can launch this part of the command and you will you will observe the all cases and controls with a uh, latitude longitude projection these are the cases and control that Thomas found around the the calling tower <coughs> so shall we continue did you plot the cases and the control so now we are going to plot them again but using the uh, projected coordinate system okay so using this image so it's the same that before you can copy and paste and change only the that geo or that pro and the title so now we have the cases and controls plot using a projected coordinate system It's meters. It's meters. Okay. So what I did here is to change the labels because they are not latitude and longitude anymore. They are uh, coordinates expressed in meters. Okay. And I changed the title as well because here we have geographical coordinates and now we have projected coordinates. All right, so everybody got his the map with the projected coordinate system. Okay, so everybody has plot the coordinate the coordinates in both geographical system and a projected system. So now we are going to using the plot of the projected coordinate system, we are going to add points, we are going to replace the cases by red dots and the controls by green dots. Hmm? So, if you want to change the color of the points, you need to keep the plot window open, you know? So you have your plot window open here, and now using the command points, you can plot the coordinates of the cases in one color and the coordinates of the controls in another color, you see? So now, in this window, we have plot the cases as red dots and the controls as green dots. We have a range of uh, values for each color. Yeah, so if you look at the syntax, what we are writing is, in this plot that I just created, you are going to plot points that are these ones, the coordinates of the cases, with a color that is two. The two is the color for red. Huh? This is the size uh, of the of the of the dots. And here uh, is the coordinates of the control, and we change it by green. That is the color three. Okay. So now you have your cases and controls. So what we are going to do. And we are going to escape the point 5 because it's not important for this practice. So we are going to at least to plot the density of events in our region. Okay? So in order to calculate the density, the kernel, the, the point 5 is just to define a polygon with the maximum and minimum values of the coordinates of both cases and controls. But we are going to escape this part, okay? Because we don't need it for this. Um, for this, well, no, and indeed we need it, sorry. So we are going to do this very quickly. Hmm? So, what we are going to do now is just to define what are the 
maximum and minimum values of the coordinates in the x uh, axis and in the y axis. Okay. Of all points, of all, of all cases, points, of all controls, all points. So the y maximum of all. Mm -hmm. So what I did first is to create a new object that just contains the coordinates. I, I don't want the rest of the variables in my database, you know? So I create a new object that is core, that contains the coordinates of all the points that I, I, I have collected, you know? So to do that, I'm going to create a new data frame that contains the coordinates in, in, a, in the projected uh, object, you know? It will be data frame, that row, and taking the slot port. This one you can edit, eh, if you want, because it's a data frame. So you can type this and do edit, court, and, and you will see that this contains just the projected coordinate in the UTM system, eh? this object. The next syntax creates two new objects. One is the limits in the x axis, x lim, and the limits in the y axis, x lim. Hmm? So to do that, hmm, what I do is to create an object that contains two values. Hmm? This first value and this second value. Mm -hmm. The first value is the minimum value in the x axis and the second value is the maximum value in the x axis. Mm -hmm. This uh, option is to uh, still estimate the minimum value or the maximum value if we have missing, missing data. Because if you have missing data in R, it's going to tell you that there is an error. So this value is remove the missing, allows you to calculate the missing even if you have the, it allows you to calculate the minimum even if you have missing data. Okay? So this object will contain the minimum value of the x axis and this uh, and the maximum value in the x axis. And it will only contain two values. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see? Okay. It's the minimum and the maximum value in the uh, in the right, x axis. So the range. Okay. The range. Yeah. But you could do that with the summary or Yeah, as well. There is other option there are other ways to do it. I did it in this way. But there is many other ways to do it. And here you do the same for the y axis and you obtain the, mini, the, mac, the minimum and the maximum values in the y axis. And, and we use the two functions. One was the C function, the create function, and inside that create function we call another function, function. which is the minimum, minimum. and the maximum, exactly. function, then comma the maximum function. Exactly. We could add like tons of other values, then xlim would have the other values as well. Yeah. Okay. That's C, well, C means calculate. Sim, that is uh, add, add or, or, or establish this collection. Concatenate. Let me create first the, the object and you will see the result. No? The poly object contains pairs of coordinates. Eh? 
This is the, if you think in, in, the, in the region that we have, this is the poly object. The poly object contains this first value, that is the minimum value of the x axis and the, uh, so this in this way, the minimum value of this axis and the minimum value of this axis. So it's going to create like a matrix with all or different sets of values of the x axis and different set of values of the y axis that is going to determine these four points of the polygon. Hmm? So the first one is the minimum value of the x axis and the uh, minimum value of the y axis. Hmm? So this is this first point. The second line contains the, the uh, maximum value of the y axis, so the value 2, and the minimum value of the y axis. The third, the third line contains the third line contains the maximum value of the x axis and the maximum value of the uh, mistake. No, no, it's fine. It's, is it? Yeah, because it, it takes, you know, these values are the minimum is here, the maximum here, the maximum here, and the minimum again here for the y, for the x axis, and in the other way for the y axis. So if you plot the poly, Sorry? How do you get square brackets? Yeah. Just by killing poly. Alt 3, Alt 3, Alt 5. So you see that it's just these values. Mm -hmm. This just creates. And Frank, poly we, the, the poly is a. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. The poly is a 2 times 4 matrix, but how does the C bind know that it's 2.4? It could be 1 A. Because the C bind is column bind. You know, oh, column bind. Okay. So you, you first you, you, uh, back, you, you create your first column with the values that you want, and after you add the second column with the values that you want. And how does the C bind know that the new column starts? Because it's separated with a comma here. Here oh, we have first I'm sorry, I see, I see. Yeah, these are the I values see. of the first column. Yes, I see. And these are the values yeah. of the second column. I, I didn't this, see the, yeah. I didn't this see is the not values. very important, honestly. Yes. We are going to use yes. the minimum and the maximum values for the analysis of the density. So we are going to to move forward. Okay. Just just one thing so how we know where to take these values already in your working directory. I mean, these points are coming from uh, your. You, you created yes before. You create this object that is x lim. We just create this object that contains the minimum value and the maximum value. So now we are, you see, this is this contains two values. Hmm? What we are saying here is take the, the first value, yes. that is the minimum, and here takes the second value, yes. that is the maximum. Yes. Now take again the second value, that is the maximum, and take the first value, that is the minimum. Hmm? And this defines. And for the y axis in the same in the same way. Yes. It's just to move it's just to move in this order. But this is really not important for the practice now. Could you show the Yeah, I can plot the poly. Now but this just contains the four the four points. Eh? Okay, so let's go for the estimation of the density of events. Indeed, my mistake is that I put density here is intensity, as I told you before. It's intensity of event. So to calculate the intensity of events in the in the region, we need two libraries. Hmm? The library is plans and the library is path stats. I'm 
natural, but uh, according to the time we have still, uh, is it uh, worse? I mean, not to continue to type all the things, but just you explain. Hey, you want me to explain? Yeah. On, on, the, on the table, because otherwise we will never get uh, even the first. Uh, the yeah, second exercise. exercise. So, so let, if you want, what I can do is, is explain what I'm doing and you will see the logic behind. Hmm? Yeah. 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 And you can repeat the exercise. It's the first time that we are using this uh, exercise for the course. So it was developed just for this course. So, you know, this, is, this can be very quick if people know already uh, hard or not. It's a exercise if you have two or three days for it. Yeah. yeah. So, let's... Uh, yeah, the logic is maybe. Okay, so I will try to, to explain each step and you can repeat after the because otherwise we are not going to finish at all. Okay. So now what I what I'm going to do is to create a new object type that is an object type PPP. These type of objects are specific objects for spatial analysis. Okay. These objects are used for this package, the status, the status, the status stats, to analyze spatial data. To create this type of objects, you need to use this command that is PPP, and uh, first you need, to, you need to specify the coordinates uh, in the x axis and the coordinates in the y axis. Okay. So this is the first value of the coordinates of the of the cases, these are the x coordinates and these are the y coordinates for the cases. Okay. And these are the limits of the polygon where we have the cases. <coughs> and I this value just specifies the, the the unit of uh, the polygon. So launching this and this syntax, you obtain two different objects. One is the cases PPP and the other one is the control PPP object. So the first one, if you uh, type, if you launch this, uh, if you want to, to see this object, the uh, system told you that it, that it contains 16 points that are the 16 cases. It gives you as well uh, the limits of the polygon. And usually it provides as well the, the unit that, uh, of, of the axis. You know, in meters. So these are the two the limits, the minimum and the maximum value for the x-axis, the minimum and the maximum value for the y-axis in meters. Okay? And this is the 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 file of cases and this is the file of controls. So we have 16 cases and 30 controls in this polygon. Okay? This is because it was important to calculate the minimum and the maximum. Just to specify the limits of uh, the polygon. Okay? So now we are going to calculate our kernel density. Yeah? So in order to do so, we need to uh, determine the bandwidth that we are going to use. As we said before, this is very imp an important parameter when you are calculating a kernel because you, you can get uh, more smoothing or less smoothing in your estimate. So there is diff many different uh, ways to, cal to, to determine the, the bandwidth and I mean we could stay almost one week just to discuss the best method to estimate this bandwidth. Mm -hmm. But something that is quite uh, generally accepted is that the Deagle method is quite good. Mm -hmm. So we can create an object that will contain the best bandwidth for our point pattern. Okay? So this is the BW uh, Deagle command. What does is to calculate the best bandwidth for our point pattern. Mm -hmm. So this bandwidth for our data is estimated to 106 meters. Okay? So the the, the radius of our kernel will be around 100, 100 meters. Okay? Once that we have estimated this bandwidth, we can calculate our uh, kernel. This kernel is 
estimated using the density PPP command. So we are going to store our kernel estimate in a new object. Is intensity It's intensity, but you know, even the command is the, is called density. So you see that it's. Uh, so if, if you if you type yes, it's very interesting because if you type density PPP in the help for the for this command, it will give you kernel smoothing smoothing intensity of the point pattern. So even if the, if the name, you see that it's uh, not so easy to, to or not, not so intuitive to, uh, to uh, obtain this. this thing. So what I have done is to create this new object that contains the, the kernel um, that contains the kernel density. So the only thing that informs is that it has created a raster with this number of pixels and that these are the limits of the polygon where we are going to plot our raster. Okay? So now what we are going to do is to plot our kernel estimate. It's as simple as this. It's nothing. We can plot our kernel estimate, so this object that we just created, and we will add the coordinates for the x-axis, the y-axis, and a, a title for the for for our estimate. Okay? So this is the so this is the kernel estimate for our uh, outbreak. Okay. So Where are the points now? I, I have still the points there. So it's obvious that there is areas where the intensity of cases is high, and there is other areas of the polygon where the, the intensity is zero. Anyway, the values of the intensity are very uh, low. Is two per uh, one thousand. It, it's very small because the, the area is quite large, and uh, we have only sixteen cases. Okay, so basically this is telling you that the intensity of event is extremely small, is more is higher in these places, specifically in this place over here, and that most of the in most of the area there is zero cases. If you add the cases into it, you can see uh, why, you know? It's because the kernel has been calculated by in the places where really there are cases. Okay, so we have now described the areas in our planner region that the intensity of cases is higher. So this was the end of the first, uh, of the second practice. Mm -hmm.